It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So today's video is a essentially part two and follow up of my previous video where I built this hot swap macro pad. So let's switch over to the desktop and away we go on the desk. So last week I did a brief video as brief as my videos go. You know how I am and I put together this macro pad. It is a very simple 3x3, three three, drives off a Pro Micro, and it uses the Kale hot swap sockets. I had shown on Instagram already sort of the prototype of the case fitment, and the first version of the case that I put together and had printed didn't actually fit properly. The tolerances were slightly off and the PCB didn't actually fit all the way in, and the other components were also slightly off due to shrinkage and bulging of the actual print and layering. Now, I could have spent a lot of time filing away bits and pieces to make it fit, but instead I went back to the design and I just tweaked some of the edges so that they were a bit smaller, in some spaces a bit bigger in other places, so I would get a better fit. And, of course, a couple of hours later from printing, I have the end result of my bottom piece, if the camera's going to come, I don't know why the camera lost focus there, oi, get back into focus, not quite sure what it's trying to focus on, but it's definitely not, uh, not playing ball today, hello, not sure if there's any other text that it's trying to read, possibly, alright, let's see if I can just get it to, my apologies, alright, so at least that plane's in focus, so, what I've got is, I've got a bottom case piece here. You can see there's still a lot of uh, support bits in there, but to be honest, as far as prototypes go, I know that structurally it doesn't affect anything, it doesn't impede anything, and I just couldn't have been bothered spending the extra time breaking away these internal supports when it doesn't affect the actual macro pad at all. I have a top piece. This is actually a plate with a lip inside, and you can see the actual fitment is a press fit which uh, turned out fairly decent. It goes all the way around. I put in a little sort of lip there that you can get in a screwdriver if you need to to pop the actual top off it. So you can just uh, pop that off. And I have a bunch of these blocker pieces. So these blockers will actually fit in to the plate on the PCB for whatever arrangement that you want to use if you're not using all nine keys. So. PCB fits right in. There's the uh, hole on the side there for the USB to go in, and it's a very snug fit, so I can actually just push that in, give it a little bit of a, a push, and you can see it's not coming out at all. I could probably give it a shake, and it's also not popping out. So there you go. So it's a nice snug fit, and let's say I just want the four keys in the corners. I can drop in a couple of blockers, just like that. They do rotate because there's really no other way of getting them to, to stay in place, but when you get your top piece in and you put it in very carefully and you snap it down, of course they do rotate a little bit and you can, if you've got some, something thin or fingernails like I've got at the moment, you can sort of just arrange them and there you go. It's, uh, it's clipped in. So, And then of course now, this particular footprint that I did with this PCB is plate mount switches. There is, I have seen, Kale hot swap footprints for KiCad and Eagle and all that kind of stuff that uses PCB mount, so it's got the extra two leg holes. My design initially didn't because I didn't have that footprint, so I've actually got some plate mount, just uh, straight up get on browns, nice and simple. And carefully with straight pins, in they go. Voila. So we got one, two, three, and four. It's done. So there it is. And of course, you would just plug in your USB cable and you could use it however you like. Now, I don't have any buttons on this PCB at this current point in time, 
but in future versions I could have a button placement and I could design the case so you could put something through to actually poke it. There are other considerations that I'm looking at because this is a work related project where I will make the Pro Micro as well hot swappable. Now one issue that I did discover with this particular design was I measured the hole placement for my USB cable at home which wasn't the same USB cables that I had available at work so when I tried to plug this in at work they didn't actually fit this hole. So the next version of the case design will have to have a larger hole but it's kind of you can kind of see it if it'll focus the PCB the Pro Micro actual socket is very very carefully in that hole position so that the socket is supported. So I wanted to give it a little bit of structural support to try and reduce the likelihood of that soldered USB socket from breaking off. How successful that is going to be I actually don't know but if it works that's pretty cool. If it doesn't well going to a hot swappable Pro Micro will fix that because if you do break it off you can just unjack the Pro Micro and replace it with a new one. And well it's relatively affordable relatively. But I am happy to say that this cable does fit because you can see the LEDs do light up. So there you go. Now I haven't actually programmed anything on it yet uh, simply because I was intending for this to be flashed to something for somebody at work but because the cable's no good that hasn't happened yet. And of course they can use anywhere from one button all the way up to nine buttons however they need it, however they like it. So there you go. That is my project primarily complete. Uh, it's been a pretty easy project. The build itself, you know, you've seen the PCB doesn't use any diodes because the matrix is small and it's relatively cost affordable to do so. The next step for this project I guess is scale up, perhaps quality of print, the hot swappable Pro Micro as I was talking about, maybe adding a button, improving the case design uh, and all of those kind of features. And I was thinking about it the other day, talking with some people about it and showing the design. It kind of means I'm starting to push into say like the Rama M10 pad kind of area in that, you know, they've got 10 switches, it is hot swappable, it does have a reset switch. But I guess the difference is this is a much cheaper alternative to that. You do have a bit more fun in variation and designing your own case and things like that if you wanted to and it essentially functions the same. It just doesn't have that same style and panaz and panache of having a, a really beautiful polished case around it and carry case and stuff like that. But at the same time when you make something like this you could just chuck it into your bag and not be too worried because it's going to be quite durable. You're not going to be worried about scratching it up or damaging it, breaking it. Because even if you did, you could probably replace a lot of parts, fix it relatively easily, relatively quickly. So if you're interested in designing something like this, building something like this, I would highly recommend that you check out some of my previous videos. Uh, I wouldn't really necessarily call them tutorials, but you can just watch the process in designing PCBs. You can also check out Rui Key Mao's guide on using KeyCAD, which is really fantastic. Hopefully I'll put the link below in the description of the video if you're interested. And of course, you can reach out to me as well and anybody as part of our The Board Podcast Slack because we've got a great bunch of people there with a lot of design experience such as Danny from Kivio who has done a whole bunch of things um, in regards to split keyboards and custom PCBs as well. So there you have it. There is my 3x3 hot swappable macro pad. Now, for the first time, also, uh, I want to say a massive thank you to all of our Patreons because you know, I'm, I do feel uh, a bit bad that I haven't really publicly readily acknowledged all of them previously because they have been instrumental in supporting this channel as well as the podcast, even though primarily it's designed that the Patreon system was to support our podcast. Um, so what I've done is I've actually put together a little splash which I'm about to tick over right now to say thank you to everybody who has been supporting us here on the board podcast. I really love it. I really appreciate it and hopefully I'll be able to continue to create to, to create 
to continue to create content for all of you guys who get behind us as well. So don't forget, our channel is coming up to about 2,000 subscribers. When we do hit 2,000 subscribers, I have these two cos caps, courtesy of Cosmosis from Reddit and Jolly Green Giant for making this possible. And uh, we'll run some giveaways for these two artisan keycaps to find a new home rather than sitting here next to me this entire time. So please hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button, and uh, let's make this 2000 subscriber thing happen as well. So, of course, thank you very much for checking out the video. And as always, until next time, happy clacking.